this week's screencast, we'll be doing a little bit more about testing, and more specifically, we'll be talking about the mock module in Python. Uh, the mock module allows you to replace particular functions and methods in your system while you're testing it. So this allows you to speed up things like HTTP requests or not to rely on API methods. So this allows you to test the fact that a particular call was made or if a particular call wasn't made or if assertion happened or an or uh, exception happened in your particular code that you're testing and allows you to verify those things happened or did not happen. Um, mocking can be a bit of an abstract concept, so we'll go a little bit deeper into understanding when and where to use it and a little bit of the pitfalls when dealing with mock itself. Let's get started. So the mocking library by Michael Ford has been introduced into Python 3.3. So if all you guys are using Python 3.3 .3 and above, fantastic. You already have it in the standard library. I think it's under the name of mock, unit test mock. Um, for those of you who are on Python 2.7, which will be the vast majority of you, you need to install it by using pip install mock, and now that you have mock. So we're going to quickly devise a few examples on how to test and use mock. We start a few examples of testing with mock. I'm just going to show you the few things that mock is capable of. So from from mock import mock. Once we have that, we can create a mock object. So we're going to assign mock to a mock object here, mock, and then we can specify a return value. So in some cases, we want our things that we're mocking out to return something when they're called. So in this case, let's say we want to return the value of one, and we're going to call this mock with a uh, few arguments, so one, four, five rather, and then one keyword argument. We're going to call this animal, and we're going to pass in dog. Once we do that, as you can see, we can see that it was called with those arguments, and one was returned. And that's how the mock was initialized. So that's how you provide a return value. This return value can also be other mocks, or it could even be a stub for something that you've created so that you know how the thing will behave. Um, you can also raise exceptions inside mocks. So you want to import from mock, import magic mock. And that is another subclass of mock, which allows you to do things like pass in side effects. So you can go mock is equal to magic mock. Side effect is what you want to pass in as your keyword argument, and you want to pass in the type of error. So let's just give it the generic error class, and then error is not defined, that doesn't exist. We'll call index error then. We'll pass that in. Once we call our particular function, again, you can call it with any arbitrary number of, of um, arguments. So we're going to call it with 12 and 5. As you can see, it raises a side effect of index error, which causes us to, or rather gives us a way to call against exceptions. So if we need to test that something accepts, we can test the flow of that exception and then see. So we'd assign it to a, to a call that we expect to cause an index error and to see how our code handles that failure case. Um, the next bit is to configure the mock. So for example, you can have it so that it can call methods and errors at the same time. So what you do is you go create a mock instance. So you'd go mock is equal to mock. And then you'd go adders. And that would be, for example, a set of attributes you want the mock to have. And then you can have a method name. This is a dictionary. So method name dot, or rather method dot return value. And then you can specify what that value is. So you can go three. And you can also then go something dot side effect. And then once you have all that stuff, you can then simply pass in another error. So we'll go key error this time. And we'll close that up. And then when you're declaring the configure, you go mock dot configure mock and you pass in the dictionary of adders. Once that's all done, if you can call the method, so you can go mock 
dot method. So as you saw before that we declared a method on mock and its return value should be three. So when you call that, you should get back three. And if you call mock dot something, that should give you a key error. And as you can see, that's the effect that you have. So there's various things you can do. The other cool thing that you can do with mock is something called the specification. And those are those are pretty pretty handy. So for example, let's import um, requests, which we'll be using later for our API calls. Um, we can make it so that our mock object applies to the specification for a particular module or top level file. So for top level um, top level class or something like that. Um, so for example, if we go mock is equal to mock and then we go spec is equal to requests we have a mock that specifies the same things as requests so if we were to go simply dir which allows us to get all the functions that you can call directly on requests that gives us a list so we, we have get head hooks logging all types of stuff there so if we do the same thing in our mock you see that it accepts all those types of of calls against the mock object that we just declared. So you can see that it has all the exceptions as well as all the get, post, request, all kinds of stuff. So if we were to simply go mock dot something, that won't work. That doesn't have an attribute of that. But if we go requests dot get, we do get a thing that we does take one argument right they're not requests so I want to do mock here so mock dot get apologies there mock dot get should give us back a mock object for the get and then we can have attach as many return values as we want there and you'll see that those actually work out to be very handy so now that we understand what we're able to do with mock we're gonna derive a little bit of an example to show you where mock is best suited. Now, you, when using mock, it can start to become kind of confusing as to what am I testing and what does this actually this test actually mean? Um, when you're using mocks, you're 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 pushing away the thing that you're mocking out. So, for example, in the case that if we're doing an API test, we don't care that if the API is up and running, we don't care if it actually even returns anything valid. All that we care is that did my code behave in the correct way once I made this API call. So what we need to do is mock out that API call so our tests remain fast, and the fact that we don't need to rely on some external service. Now, when you do need to rely on external service, you need to have integration tests, which are much longer running and much more comprehensive. But in the case that you don't want to have, um, or don't need to have an integration test, you want to write a unit test that will mock away that API call, but still able to be verify the things that are going to be happening. And this is where mock steps in. So we're just gonna quickly write an example using the request libraries. So we're gonna import requests. We're gonna define a method called get data. We're then going to response requests.get. And we're gonna use HTTP bin, which is a little bit of a testing ground for requests. And then we're gonna return response dot status code which should give us a 200 um, what's the problem there Semicolon. so that is our function there we simply call get data it makes a call to httpbin.org slash get we then ask for the status code of that particular response which should be 200 so in order to test this in which we're going to write a simple test just to show how we do this if it, we weren't using mock. So we're going to import unit test. We're then going to go from calls, import get data. We are then going to create a test calls class, class called test calls. And our first test will be def test get 
data and we simply call assert and we're gonna go get get data and we're gonna assert that we get a 200 back so we're gonna simply run the, those tests in that file a module named call because it's because it's called calls save that we're on the test again Bang. as you can see that HTTP request took 1.45 seconds now that might not seem long but compound that over 100 tests and you got roughly 100 seconds of wait time just to check to see if a particular API call returned to 200 or behaved in the proper way so what we need to do is restructure our test in order to use requests so what we're going to do is include some mocking in our particular test case so we're going to go back here we're going to go and use the patch so we're going to go from mock import patch what patch allows us to do patch is a context manager which we discussed in a few screencasts back what it does is allows us to patch the value of a particular object over the context of this call so the entire time we are in this block here while we're inside this bl block this context manager block everything that we've every call against the request.get will return get mock and then inside here we can we can set values against get mock so what we can do is go get mock dot return value All right once we have that we're going to go status code dot return value is equal to 200 so what that means is we're going to call get mock that's going to return a value that value has a status code object which will then call return value on that again and that will give us the 200 which should provide us with a get data of equal to 200 so we're going to need to import requests here and that should be that so if we were to simply run this test again oh we don't have it working so this is one of the pitfalls with using mock sometimes the objects that you're mocking don't always have the correct syntax when you're mocking them so you really need to understand how these values work so if we were to go back and quickly put a pdb statement inside our at the very top of our object here so we're going to go import pdb pdb dot set trace we're gonna run this again, but this time we're gonna step through and see what actually is happening here. So we do request.get. Request.get. We see that we do have a magic op mock object for the get value. So that patch worked perfectly. But when we call request.get.status code, we get the mock name of that object. So we're not actually able to assign anything to that value. So what we need to do is to assign another mock to the response that from from the get command so going back to our code here you see that we have a return value for get mock that is the response value here so that we saw that when we checked out the response here so um, response we saw a get value came back so its return value needs to be a mock as well so in order to do that we simply go back to the return value of the thing we assign it a mock response and we assign that as well to a mock which we'll need to import above so what this actually ends up doing is that we have a mock instance assigned to the return value of the get this 
is a reference so that we can set some values against that particular mock response. So that mock response allows us to attach what our status code status code will be. So we go mock response dot status code is equal to 200. Now, when we call our get, we get a mock object as just as we did here before, which is a magic mock object. But its return value is another mock object, which we set the attribute of get um, we set the attribute of status code of a 200, which will allow our test to pass pretty fast without making any third party API calls. So we're going to remove this PDB just for the sake of speed. And we're going to continue past this one. It clearly fails, same as before. But if we call it again, you see that our test quickly passed in 0.18 seconds. And we verified that our endpoint was called. And we did get uh, a 200 back from the user. This has been an introductory tutorial to mock. This should get you pretty much all the way there to do all your stuff. A lot of the work behind mock is mostly trying to figure out how you're going to mock out the particular functionality in your code. Um, it can get a bit tricky, but it gets better with time. Hopefully in the future we'll have another screencast where we talk about pitfalls with mock. But this concludes today's screencast.